Welcome to the Insider Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man. Uh, it's time for the superlatives. Now, look, I know the Red Raiders finished 4-8, and eight, but there were some good individual performances worthy of recognition, and now's the time. So let's go ahead and get the obvious out of the way. The, the team MVP, none other than senior linebacker Jordan Brooks. Just your thoughts on his performance uh, this season. I was going with Jax Welch, man, but uh, <laughs> no, nothing. Sorry, Jax. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame that he got hurt, you know, and he wasn't able to finish off the season. Uh, but when he was out there, you know, best linebacker in the Big 12, uh, best linebacker at Texas Tech since uh, Zach Thomas. Um, so just, yeah, tremendous, tremendous season. I, you know, I hope his shoulder heals up and it doesn't impair what should be an excellent NFL career. Mm -hmm. uh, if he gets a, a nice bill of health, uh, from the from the people in the NFL, from those doctors and everything like that, you know, I see him as a late first round draft pick uh, and, and playing for a long, long time in the league. So, uh, you know, I, too bad he didn't get to experience some more wins here at Texas Tech because he was a guy who certainly deserved it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just a tremendous year for him. Yeah, he played a lot of snaps for Texas Tech. He's a four year starter. I mean, he was there for that Arizona State game in Tempe. You know, he experienced some bad times, honestly. Here, it's weird, but. In football, more than any sport that I cover, you could have really exceptional players on really terrible teams. And I think it's exactly what you have with Jordan Brooks. Uh, but moving on, let's uh, offensive MVP. I'll be interested to see who, who your pick was for. You know, I'm going to go with Jet Duffy. Mine as well. Yours too? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, uh, he just, you know, there are major questions about what he was going to be able to do. Uh, once Bowman went down, I, I probably had more questions than you did. Uh, but you know, a lot of that. It was fair. Those questions were fair. Yeah. I, I mean, yes, you had more questions than I did, but I, I still think those questions were fair. You know, and a lot of them just revolved around ball security. I mean, uh, yeah. he had a reputation to turn the ball over. And that's that's the facts. That's what the coaches were saying as well. Uh, the coaches were saying as well. But, uh, you know, he took care of the ball. You know, yeah. I mean, one, and once you get that squared away, then his – talents which are considerable can yeah. can rise up and uh he proved to be a very competent passer uh, i think he improved uh gradually over the course of the season as a passer i think uh his balls over the middle uh, were yeah. particularly good uh intermediate range stuff on slants and whatnot he throws that really well uh and then late in the season uh he started showing what he can do with his legs a little bit more yeah. you know uh, earlier uh that wasn't really manifesting itself and there are reasons for that but once he cut that loose, uh, you saw that dual threat action uh, come into the fore there. So uh, to me, he's without question your clear cut starter going into next year. Uh, and he had a good year. You know, there are rumors that he might be looking to transfer actually. Wow. So can you imagine uh, if, if you lose your offensive MVP and your, excuse me, and your overall team MVP? I mean, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. So who, who would be your not being Jordan Brooks, someone other than Jordan Brooks, who would be your defensive MVP? Uh, yeah, I'm going with it. Uh, hard to go. <laughs> True. That's a tough question. Especially in the secondary, but that's where I'm going here, and it's not Douglas Coleman, Zach oh, McPherson. Wow. Okay. You know, because I think uh, he was the one guy that actually gave you something of a little bit of an anchor there. Yeah. Something. He was a solid player back there. I mean, how many times were we slapping ourselves in the head saying, Zach, Zach, Zach? No, no. I mean, he was. He was yeah. solid, you know. I mean, yeah. he wasn't. He was covering well. He was solid in run force. Pretty uh, good tackler, yeah. Good I'm tackler, yeah, sure. Corner, I mean. You know, and I mean, he wasn't making a whole lot of big plays, but he was. Let's just put it this way: if the entire secondary had played as well as Zach McPherson did, yeah. uh, a little more games. Yes, yeah, so this team would, would we'd they'd still be playing. You know, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, so I mean, uh, yeah, he's he's the guy. He's kind of an unsung hero, I thought. But uh, you know, I thought he did a good job. I don't feel good about this. I really don't, but I'm going to go with Douglas Coleman because eight interceptions are, yeah. I mean, that's production. Yeah. He struggled mightily in coverage a lot of times and in tackling. Uh, so I don't want to get out, go out, get out of hand or anything, but he did come up with eight interceptions. He was a first team all big 12 performer. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to say Douglas Coleman with the caveat that obviously Jordan was, was the guy, uh, but he's the team MVP. All right, Joe, next up is most improved player. Who do you got? Uh, Dawson Deaton. Yes. Center, um, yeah, because uh, you know he he got action as a freshman. Uh, he was in all games, started a couple of games, 
Uh, but he wasn't necessarily somebody you pointed to and said, wow, you know, future superstar or anything right. like that. And yet this year, uh, we heard that he was overall Tech's best offensive lineman, mm-hmm. according to the coaches. Uh, again, with the offensive linemen, a lot of it is just, you know, when you don't hear their names called a lot, you know, they're, they're playing well. You're not committing penalties. Uh, you're not just getting blown up or blown around. Uh, and I, you know, I think he was just again, just kind of a solid guy in there, and uh, I think he's got a really bright future. I do too. I'm excited about Dean's future, and that's actually my choice as well. Uh, all right, Joe. Up next is freshman of the year. Now, this can be true or redshirt freshman. Uh, who, who do you have there? Uh, Jalen Hutchings. Nice. Uh, yeah, defensive lineman there. Uh, yeah, I think that's a guy who, uh, if he stays healthy, is really going to make some waves. And uh, you know, some of the TV media guys. And some of these games that Tech played said the same thing. I really like Jalen yeah. Hutchings because uh, he does flash. Uh, he's just an incredible athlete. Uh, I would be happy to see him get some carries. You know, I mean, he, he which he yeah. did on the fake punt. A couple times. Yeah, and, and we know, uh, you know, what he did as a high school running back. I mean, I mean, you can see it. I mean, he does have all that sort of athleticism. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can pack that into a, what, 290, 300-pound guy on the defensive line. Uh, That's pretty special. So uh, I think uh, he's a guy that's going to be on some NFL uh, radar screens eventually as well. So, uh, yeah, big year from uh, Jalen, and uh, he's really going to be something else. Yeah, I really like him and Nick McCann coming back again as nose guard. Hopefully Nick can be healthy. He was hurt. He got hurt in the first game. Never really got his his, his ankle right all, all year. So those two guys are very different guys, but I like them as a one-two uh, nose guard next year. So that will be good. Uh, my freshman of the year is EZ, Eric Ezekama. Early in the year, I was going, I was like, oh, he's going to tear it, he's going to tear it up. And he started really slow. But then he ended up, I think, finishing in the top two or three in the yeah. team and catches. Uh, had a really good end of the year, but the really good November. Um, you know, TJ was, Vasher was suspended and out. Uh, he stepped up. Uh, I, you know, him and RJ uh, Turner really stepped up, I felt like. So I, I really like the potential in the receiving core, and EZ is a big part of that. So those are the superlatives. I know it was a disappointing season, 4-8 and eight overall, but there were some good performances. My Joe, great stuff from you as always. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.